In this video, we'll be covering how to create a character setup in Motion Builder to receive motion capture data. So if you have your character set up somewhere in a folder on your, on your machine, I highly recommend coming down here to the Asset Browser, right-clicking, and adding a favorite path to wherever that character might be living. Um, I've already done that, so I'm just going to come over to my paths here and come down to blacksmith characters Voland and I'm going to grab his character rig and simply drag it into the viewport and open with no animation since he's a character that will be receiving animations and this is Voland from the unity blacksmith demo so I'm going to control a and we can cycle through the different view modes um, so you can see that this character has a pretty standard skeleton with some, some extra joints going on here for his, for his skirt um, and his hair. So what we're going to do is create a default character setup for, for him, which will only account for a certain amount of joints that are necessary for the uh, retargeting process and kind of ignore everything else. Um, for now. So if you're coming from Maya and need a reminder, the navigation controls in Motion Builder are shift and left click to pan, control, left click to zoom, and control and shift at the same time, left click to orbit. Uh, those also apply uh, on the right click if you want a camera centric uh, movement. So to set up this character, um, there's a couple ways to go about it. Over here in the character controls, we can define a skeleton and create uh, our control rig over here. But since we already have these bones in him named uh, correctly, so we've got left forearm, left arm, etc., we can use Motion Builder's template. So we'll come down here to template and characters, and we're looking for this red character icon. Uh, so just like we did before, we're just going to drag the character icon out and we're going to drop it on any of the main bones in his, in his skeleton. And when we drop it, we'll get this characterized drop down uh, and we will make him a biped because he's a biped. And it looks like nothing has happened, but if we come up to character here, we'll see that we now have character as an option. And if we click on the definition tab, we can see and select all the different bones uh, that are set up for this character. And you can see it hasn't taken into account stuff like his skirt. Um, he doesn't have toes, but um, he does have roll bones and some nice little extra features um, in his rig that we will definitely be using. Um, you can also see that now in our navigator we have a lot of options for him that we'll be getting into later. But for right now, the first step should always be to come down or to come up to this blue box and come to edit, definition, rename, because uh, organization is the most important part of any sort of CG or animation project. So with that set up, uh, we can now set his source to none, stance, or control rig. So if we click on control rig, uh, we'll want an FK and IK rig. So we have lots of options. And you'll see that the skeleton is now hidden, and it is replaced with Motion Builder's uh, uh, human IK rig. So again, a reminder that uh, with this rig, you have three types of control modes. Uh, you have just the selection, which doesn't actually work on a lot of the controllers uh, the way you think it should. Um, you have body part, the middle one here, uh, which will, like it says, sort of give the IK effect to that body part. And then full body IK, which will allow the IK to affect the entire the entirety of the rig. Before we get into any of that, 
uh, we'll drop it back to no source and we will come down into our asset browser again and we will find some animation. And Motion Builder will freak out for a little bit. Uh, so let's take this simple circle running animation, drop it in, and we'll have uh, the option to merge. So we will merge in the circle running data. So here you can see we've brought in our motion capture data, which has a lot of junk in it, uh, which in blade or you can uh, choose to not bring the stuff in. I guess I just forgot. Um, so what I want to do is come down to my navigator and open up the scene information and I'm going to select system. Um, all of these markers are simply for uh, we don't need these these markers here right now. Um, some of these things aren't even in this take um, so I'm actually going to select a lot of these unselect um, actually who is it in this scene So Nick solving is what I want. So I'm going to select all of this other stuff that I don't want, right click and select branches so that I can select everything in the hierarchies. And I'm going to right click and delete because the delete key on your keyboard won't do anything. Um, so that leaves me with my motion capture skeleton. Uh, it does this really simple run in circles. So we're going to do the same thing to our motion capture uh, that we did to our character, which is come to templates, characters, and drag in our character and characterize his skeleton. It's another biped. And again, we're going to rename this. Um, we can call this Nick mocap. Because I know that the actor's name was Nick, and I don't want to get it confused with a character in this scene. So now that Motion Builder recognizes that both of these skeletons are, you know, regular humanoid biped characters, we can actually set our modeled character to look at the animation of our mocap simply by setting the source to Nick. So you'll see he snaps over. And if we hit play, you can see that our character now follows the mocap data. Cool. But this isn't where we're going to end this because this is not something that we can uh, edit, edit upon. This is just applying the data um, in sort of like a previs kind of way. So the next step is we're going to come up to our blue box again and we're going to bake or plot the animation data to the control rig so that we can animate on top of it. So let's click that. It'll think for a while and you can see that we're back to the control rig and now that animation data is uh, plotted to the control rig. Um, you can see this message down here, too many keys for edit. Um, but if we look at our F curves or um, you know, curve editor, graph editor in Maya, you can see that we have all this animation data uh, on our controllers. So what we can do from here is use our animation layers to come in 
and you know correct some of this animation data that we'll probably go over in another video. Um, but that's the basics for now uh, of how to apply animation. So if we were to uh, completely remove the Nick mocap data, this would still go. We know we don't actually need it anymore. Uh, and probably should get rid of it before we export this so we're not dragging around um, you know a lot of extra data so I could just delete his character select branches on Nick solving skeleton and delete him and we still have our animation data applied to our rig so eventually what you would want to do when you're done with all of the cleaning is we would want to again um, select our character and we would want to bake plot it down to a skeleton because we don't want to bring in any of the rig information into Unity or Unreal or even Maya really. Um, so we bake that down, the animation is still there and from here we could simply save as um, you know, Voland, I like to name it with an at sign, circle run, O1. Save this out, and there you go. That's how to characterize your character and your mocap data and apply that mocap data to your character.